Good morning. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, commonly referred to as the King James Version. And please turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to Proverbs chapter 3. We are going to be going over today verses 19 on to verse 26 in Proverbs chapter 3. I'm going to share with you what the Lord has shared with me when looking at these uh, verses of scriptures. Please, follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures that we are going to be looking at today. Follow me along. Keep me accountable. Check me out. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove, okay? Be a Berean for once in your life, okay? Don't be as one of these Christians who just sit there idly and expect to be sp uh, spoon-fed by a Jesuit-trained cemeterian. Search the scriptures daily. Be more noble than these Christians. Noble. And what is noble? Searching the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Check me out. But well, more rather, search the scriptures. That is what makes you noble according to scripture. Not that you affix to your name uh, this title of an appellation of something. Doesn't work that way. Oh, and by the way, the thumbnail, if you're curious, that was my breakfast. Proverbs chapter 3. We will be reading verses 19 on to verse 26. Verse 19. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. What is wisdom? What is wisdom? You got to remember when defining a word in scripture the word is always defined in scripture by its context. Okay? What is context? I use the analogy of a sandwich. You got the bread on top and the bread on the bottom. And in the middle there is the meat and the nutrients, but the bread in the, on the top and the bottom are also nutrients. Okay? The whole sandwich, that is the context. Okay? A lot of people like to take out the middle part of the sandwich and just eat that while ignoring the bread that is on the top and on the bottom. Okay? The whole context is exactly that, the analogy of the sandwich. In every single occurrence in Scripture, wisdom is not always a reference onto the fear of the Lord. But in a general sense of the definition of the word as used in Scripture, wisdom is exactly what? Job 28, 28. One second, please. Job 28... Not Psalm, Brad. <laughs> Job 28, verse 28. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. You watch any of these uh, videos that the Lord gives me to do, you know that that's what, you, yes, wisdom is the fear of the Lord. There's a stark difference between wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom is what gives knowledge okay many people have knowledge oh 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 a whole lot of people have knowledge but what is their wisdom what is the source of their knowledge 99.9 percent of the time that you run into these people like that jordan peterson guy uh like um uh what's his name macarthur their wisdom is fleshly wisdom, which is earthly, sensual, devilish, the wisdom of this world. Okay? But the Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. What do you mean? The Lord by his fear founded the earth? And by understand okay, the Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding he hath he established the heavens. By understanding. Established the heavens. Understanding. Departing, separation. Okay, remember in the book of Genesis, he called the day, uh, the light day, and the darkness night. He made a distinction, a separation. Okay, Proverbs chapter one, verse seven. Just one verse here. Okay, Proverbs chapter one, verse seven. 
this one verse. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools who say in the heart there is no God despise wisdom and instruction. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom, there's the tie-in in the very verse, and instruction. Wisdom, the fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You fear the Lord. You have me. That's the beginning of knowledge. And note here, and instruction. Where do we get our instruction? From our hearts. From, league, from uh, following a spirit that you can't identify because God is spirit and you, you got to go to someone else for them to decipher what spirit is what? No. Now Proverbs chapter 9. One verse. Verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Again. And the knowledge of the holy knowledge knowing something of the holy is understanding see when you live your life according to scripture you find out what is good and is uh, not good because god is the only one who truly knows what is good and what is evil okay we because of the fall thanks adam and eve uh we we you know um like satan says ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil okay so we are able to judge what is good and evil, but see, what we base our judgment on is in itself flawed. We don't know what is truly good, what is truly evil because of the fall. Okay? We have to go to God for us to know what is truly good and what is truly evil. Okay? We think we do, but see, that's dictated to us by our flesh, by our hearts, which are, which are deceitful above all things. Okay? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy is understanding. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. But, well, well, Brad, but, but this thing about by the fear of himself he founded the earth? Psalm 24. Psalms 24. Psalm 24, beg your pardon. Psalm 24. <clears throat> Psalm 24, verses 1 and 2. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein, founded. For he hath founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Yes, all you crazy evolutionists out there. God created the heaven and the earth. God created the heaven and the earth. God created everything. Okay? This didn't happen by millions and billions of years where something came out of nothing. The only one that could bring something out of nothing is God. God created the heaven and the earth. Okay? He created everything in six days and rested the seventh day. Okay? God is the creator. And God said, He spake. That is the Word made flesh. God spake. Okay? God created everything. He founded the earth. What, is, what does it mean to found something? Well, our, our founding fathers of America, okay, the devil Freemasons that they were, okay? Foundry, like founded it, created. Okay? Okay? The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. See, you atheists out there, it doesn't matter what you believe. It really doesn't. You want to reject truth? See, you don't deny that there is a God. You just don't want to believe in the actual God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, as given to you, uh, uh, as given unto you by the authorized version of the Scriptures. Okay, you want a God of your own creating, your own making, your your own God that you have founded, the one that you look at in the mirror, basically. But see, it doesn't matter 
if you want to believe that or not. God created you. Now, you don't have a personal saving relationship with Him, but He created you. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. It matters not what you think, atheist. He is your God, and unto Him you're going to give an account. For He hath founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Psalm 89. Say out Psalm 89. Verses 7 on to verse 11. Now again you might be saying, okay Brad, what about this thing about how you're, what you're saying about this verse? The Lord by wisdom, the fear of the Lord, hath founded the earth. By understanding, he, by understanding, hath he established the heavens. Psalm 89. Verses 7 on to verse 11. God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints. Saints. Today. What is a saint today? Someone who is actually saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Don't believe Catholicism. They're Satan's church. Okay? And to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. Okay? It used to be uh, in a time before my own, when even lost devils had openly, at least, a little bit more reverence, respect for our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and especially for His Word, the authorized version. But since time has progressed, and yea, hath God said prevailed, and sin is just destroying all nations on earth, what is God? Huh? What is good? Yea, hath God said. Okay? But there used to be a time when even heathen people, lost people, had a little bit more reverence for God than anyone does basically today. O Lord God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like unto thee, or to thy faithfulness round about thee? Thou rulest the raging of the sea. When the waves thereof arise, thou stillest them. Thou hast broken Rahab in pieces. As one that is slain, thou hast scattered thine enemies with thy strong arm. The heavens are thine. There are three heavens. The sky, the dome, and where God is. Okay, those are the three heavens. Okay? The heavens are thine. The earth also is thine. As for the world and the fullness thereof, thou hast founded them. Brought them to being. Created them. Okay? Okay? founded them. The scriptures plainly tell us that God created all things. Okay? You atheists out there that believe in a millions and billions of years ago in a galaxy far, far away. Okay? That's nonsense. That's stupidity. That's stupidity. God created the heaven and the earth in six days. You want proof of a creator? Look at yourself. Be careful, though, you don't crack the mirror, okay? But look at yourself. You're made in the image of God. You have a spirit, you have a soul, you have a body. Evolution cannot, uh, cannot explain the detailed uh, things of an eyeball, okay? Look at a leaf, the veins in a leaf. That did not come by millions and billions and trillions of things, years, in a galaxy far, far away. That's insanity. It, it's, it's not even logical. It isn't even logical. It, ha it has no merit. Okay? Darwin, I don't believe he was saved. Eh, I really don't believe he... If I said that before, I'm sorry. Uh, looking at his life work and even on his deathbed, that deathbed convention stuff, eh, don't buy it. Darwin's in hell. Okay? He, he, he sure believes now, doesn't he? There again, he always did believe. But he didn't believe in the actual God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. He believed in the God of his own founding, as so many people do. Yes, the heavens are thine, the earth also is thine. As for the world and the fullness thereof, thou hast founded them. Founded, yes. The Lord by wisdom, fearing him, hath founded the earth. By understanding, departing from evil, hath he established the heavens. And there is a separation. There is a separation. 
like I said, in Genesis chapter 1. He called the, the light day, and the darkness he called night. Okay? There's a separation. Uh, like uh, the guy, the rich man, uh, calling out to uh, in Abraham's bosom, uh, the rich man and Lazarus, right? And Abraham said unto him, uh, besides all this, there's a great gulf fixed that they can't come to and fro. I just bradized that. Okay? Separation. A distinction. Okay? And now go to Isaiah chapter 64. Stick with me here. Stick with me. We have to go through this process. Okay? Isaiah chapter 64. Verses 1 on to verse 4. Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. When the mountains flow down at thy presence. Got to remember context. A lot of times in Scripture, when you see references on the mountains and floods, in context tells you that a majority of the time that it's referring on to types of people. Okay, but like I said, just like with wisdom, every appearance of the word wisdom is not always a reference onto the fear of the Lord. That's determined by context. Okay, context. All right, let's continue. As when the melting fire burneth. The fire causeth the waters to boil, to make thy to make thy name known to thine adversaries, that the nations may tremble at thy presence. And the, and the nations, when our Lord comes back with us at His second coming, oh, you better believe the nations are going to tremble at His presence. Oh yeah, oh yeah. When thou didst terrible things which we look not for. Thou camest down, the mountains flowed down at thy presence. For since the beginning of the world men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. So we see here that nations are going to tremble at his presence, and the mountains flowing down. Okay, flowing down. Okay, the mountains. The big stout mountains. Innate objects will flow down, fall at the presence of the Lord. Nations of men tremble at his presence. Okay? Uh, go to Nehum. Nehum. Nehum, chapter 1, verses 4 on to verse 6. Verse 19 and in Proverbs 3, The Lord by wisdom, fear of himself, hath founded the earth. By understanding, departing from evil, hath he established the heavens. Hmm. hmm. Separation and distinction. Nahum, chapter 1, verses 4 on to verse 6. He rebuketh the sea, and maketh it dry. He drieth up the rivers. He drieth up all the rivers. Bashan languisheth, and Carmel, and the flower of Lebanon languisheth. Uh, Mr. Catholic friend, who has, <laughs> who has uh, commented about the Euphrates River, um, I have not looked into that. I don't have the time for that. But I'm sure you could jump a joy at this reference, couldn't you? Yeah. But anyway, let's continue. The mountains quake at him. The innate mountains quake at him. And the hills melt. And the earth is burned at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. So all these innate things tremble, fall, melt before him. But what about us? What about man? We shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Let's continue. Who can stand before his indignation? Oh, how many of these people that, that you've heard, when I get and stand before God, I'm going to ask him this, 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 this. Really? Yeah, you go ahead, tough guy. Uh, actually, as we're going to see, uh, the, uh, the questions that are going to be asked at the presence of the Lord are not going to be on your behalf. It's going to be Him asking you, if anything, questions. 
okay? All right? Or when I get before, when I get to God, I'm going to ask him, why did you do this? Why did you do this? Shut up. No, you're not. Only a flippant, foolish individual would dare to have such chutzpah to demand of the Lord. You're not going to demand anything in his presence, tough guy. <laughs> yeah, who can stand before his indignation? You think you're going to stand before his indignation? They're tough guy. Oh, yeah. You say you don't believe in a God. Oh, with a statement, well, I'm going to ask God. I'm going to, yeah, you are your own God. Get over yourself, tough guy. And who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire. And the rocks are thrown down by him. Okay? Uh, Psalm 33. Psalm 33. Are you getting this so far? Hmm? Psalm 33. Just one verse. Uh, excuse me. Uh, a couple of verses. Psalm 33. Psalm 33. Verses 6 on to verse 8. By the word... Now that's a lowercase w. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Lowercase w there is not talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, but Jesus Christ is the word made flesh. Jehovah saves the anointed one, okay? But we find out by the word of the Lord that God our Father, who is our Lord Jesus Christ, made the heaven and the earth, okay? So this statement holds true, okay? By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. How do you find out how the heavens were made and the earth was made? Through the scriptures. Okay? And all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. God has a mouth? Lord willing, the next video that's coming on uh, Wednesday, uh, I'm going to be answering a question asked by a beloved sister about uh, what's the difference between a spirit and a soul. Okay, Lord willing, that will be coming Wednesday. But God has a mouth. Well, we're made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. But figure, huh? More on that later. He gathereth the waters of the seas together as in heap. He layeth up the depths in storehouses. Let all the earth Fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of Him. Paul never talked about the fear of the Lord. Oh, shut up. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. Well, terror isn't fear. See, that's the mindset of devils. They, they constantly are searching for a loophole to go through. There's, no, there's usually no reasoning with these people who are constantly, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. Now wipe your butt and go take a long walk off of a short pier. Okay? It's like these people who say, don't judge. <laughs> and that's exactly what they're doing. <laughs> and they base that off of nothing except their own feelings, not fact or truth. I'm telling you. Let all the earth fear before fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. And then and then Luke chapter six. Luke chapter six. Luke chapter six. Verses forty six on to verse forty nine. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? This holds true for today in this dispensation. You call him Lord, Lord, but yet you don't want to live according to the scriptures? You just want to follow your heart? <laughs> Go away. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will shew you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. Christ, 
our Lord Jesus Christ. Not a stone, which is Peter. Okay? A, a rock. All right? Now that is lowercase r. That doesn't mean he's talking about Peter, you idiots. I'm saying that with love. Okay? Let's continue. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. Is the faith that you have truly founded on our Lord Jesus Christ? Or is it founded upon the wisdom of men, the fear of man? Uh, upon some uh, Jesuit trained cemeterian saying, Yea, hath God said. The, the authorized version, it's, the, it's pretty good, but it's not perfect. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth. And uh, Matthew, I believe it says, upon the sand. And if you look under a microscope, what is sand? A whole bunch of little itty bitty tiny little stones. Okay? Against which the streams did vehemently, did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was great. Yes, someone who bases their faith on the shifting sand that is the fear of man and not the fear of the Lord. And about the rock. Now, now it was founded upon a rock. Lord Kesar. But go very quickly to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Just one verse. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Just one verse. Not Genesis prayer. Pick your part. As you can tell, I'm using two, two sets of scriptures. It's easier for me. Deuteronomy chapter 32, if my fingers will get there, verse 4 is what we want. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 4. Uh, let's read verse 3 and 4. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ. Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the capital R rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are perfect. Judgment. Don't judge. Don't. Every time you hear one of these Christians say, don't judge, it's to justify their sins. That's every single time. Every single time. Okay? Or to justify a heretic. Every single time. If you don't judge, then how are you supposed to know the difference between good and evil? Especially if you're not going through the, to the scriptures. The scriptures declare to you what is good and what is evil. And you are to judge based upon scripture. Okay? He is the rock, capital R. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. Okay? And of course, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, just one verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. Okay, come on. And did all... You know what? Verses 1 on to verse 4, okay? Talking about context, okay? Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant of that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized, identified unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. How do you know that's identified there, Brad? Show me where it says baptism or baptized in the Old Testament. Okay, technically, yes. And before the death, burial, and resurrection, yes, before the death, burial, and resurrection, yes, technically, that is, that, no, that is still uh, under the law, okay? Chronologically in the books of the Old Testament, okay? From Genesis on to Malachi. I wish you hadn't said that, brother. Malachi. Show me that. Show me baptism or baptized from Genesis to Malachi. Show it to me. Okay? So, identify. Okay? And all, and did all eat the same spiritual meat? And did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of that spiritual, capital R, rock that followed them. And that rock, capital R, was Christ. Okay? Christ is the rock. But see, now you look at verse 19 in uh, Proverbs 3. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. 
By understanding, he established the heavens. Mountains and hills are going to fall at his presence. The earth trembles and quakes. And, 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 and it brings to mind Isaiah chapter 1. Okay? Isaiah chapter 1, uh, verses 2 and 3. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For the Lord hath spoken. I have nursed and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox, the ox, a beast that has no soul. They have a spirit and a body. They have no soul, okay? The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. The innate objects that God has made, that he has created, tremble at his presence. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. You think you're going to get before God, you atheist, and you lying devil, and you're going to be like demanding God? You, you're going to, you know, John fell down at his, uh, at his presence as if he were dead. We, saved, born again, converted to the church of the living God. When we get before the Lord, uh, it's not going to be, hey, Jesus, high five, and bro. It's going to be trembling. It's going to be fearful. Because we're going to have to give an account. We're going we're gonna to go to heaven regardless because we are sealed until the day of redemption. But we're going to give it an account. Okay? We're going to give an account. Yes. And if judgment begins at the house of God, what's it going to be like for you? Now you think about this. Think about this. The mountains, the hills, the earth itself trembles at his presence. The animals who have no soul no, what's going? No, he's God, their Creator. But we as man, subjective in our belief. What? What is gender? I identify as this. I don't believe that. My Je the Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. But see, Satan came along. He hath God said. These Christians, everything they are about, everything that they do is contrary to scriptural fear of the Lord. There is no fear of God before their eyes. The Christians do not fear God. The Christians have no fear of God. None. And it's upon his fear that he founded the earth. Because the earth and the mountains, the hills and everything, everything, the animals, they tremble at him. But stubborn, proud, ye shall be as God's man. Verse 20. By his knowledge, the depths are broken up. And the clouds drop down dew. Now see? Wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Look at that order. Don't look at me. Look at that order. Wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Okay? A lot of people have knowledge. But what is their knowledge? What wisdom is their wisdom is their knowledge based upon? The wisdom, the fear of man. The fear of man. Which is earthly sensual, devilish. Okay? Okay? But look at that order. Wisdom, the fear of the Lord, understanding, departing from evil, knowledge, knowing. Okay? By his knowledge, the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down the dew. Okay? And for that, we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, we want verses 1 on to verse 3. Now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. And remember, an idol only means, in every occurrence, it can only be referencing 
to a little marionette statue. It has no other application. <laughs> As someone to tell you to justify their decking the halls. <laughs> okay? But charity. Again, another word that heretics like to mess with. Charity edifieth self-sacrifice. What the, what the, these, these atheists like that Jordan Peterson guy, you ever watch that guy? It's like, you know, he'd probably beat me up in a heartbeat. But, you know, it's like you want to jam a bar of soap down his mouth. The profane, foul uh, speaking man that he is. And he believes in God. Yeah. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. Oh, a lot of people say that they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. How so? They don't live their lives according to the scriptures, but they go by the feelings. And they're in their spontaneity, they are spontaneously. Uh, showing that they are children of the devil. Okay? But yes, we all have knowledge. We all know something. But what is your knowledge based upon? Uh, what is it based off of? What wisdom is it? Hmm? Uh, a majority of it that we run into, uh, Colossians, and got to go to this. Got to go to Colossians. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. <coughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Colossians chapter 2 well verse 8 uh, you can read the whole context yourself uh, verses 1 on to verse 8 <laughs> beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ and, and you look up at verses 2 and 3 here, uh, verses 1 on to verse 3, excuse me. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you, and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Christ. What does that say? In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom, which leads on to true knowledge. Because the knowledge that so many of these cemeterians have, they have it from Satan himself. The Jesuit order. You know, Jesuit trained cemeterians. Okay? Alright? And also to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verse 20. Oh, Timothy! Keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain blah, 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 babblings, and oppositions of science, falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. A lot of people like to argue and say that science there is talking about knowledge. Okay? Well, if it is, look at the science, the <laughs> science of evolution. It's a religion. There's no proof. There is no fossil showing a transitionary or a transition animal. It's a it's a religion. It's a hoax. It's fake. It's yea hath God said. Okay, from like a bird uh, transforming into a dog. You don't see that. Okay, that that's nonsense. It's nonsense. Okay, it's nonsense. But see. Philosophy. A lot of these Christians that you run into are real good philosophers. They have no wisdom. They have, and because they have no wisdom, they have no knowledge. Their wisdom is earthly, sensual, devilish. 
And hence, they're of the world. They speak of the world. Okay? But you know, by his knowledge, the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down the dew. Okay? Again, you know, these people, they think they're going to get to the Lord and demand of him. And they think they know better than God and all this. You ever read the book of Job? Job 38. For those of you hotshot tough guys, when I go stand before God, why did you do this? Why did you do that? Why did you let this happen? Blah, 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 blah. There are people right now today who actually believe in their perverse little heart that they're going to do that. Job 38, verses 1 under verse 11. Job 38, verses 1 under verse 11. Job 38, verses 1 and verse 11. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? And he was not talking, the Lord was not talking of Eliu. The Lord just kind of overlooked Eliu. Okay? Verse 3. Gird up now thy loins like a man. For I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. And Job, you got to remember the testimony of Job, that he was a perfect and upright man, one who feared God and eschewed evil. Where would that testimony come from? The Lord himself. The Lord himself said that of Job. And the Lord himself, who gave Job one of the greatest testimonies a man could ever get. Okay, outside of the, uh, out, you know, of what he said of Moses, but Job, what he said of Job, he is a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. The Lord said that of Job, but of that same Job, the Lord is saying, Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. You think you're going to get before the Lord with all your questions, huh? Yeah, you're, you have no fear of God, you devil. You have no fear of God. Okay, you think you know something, huh? Yeah. Where was thou when I had when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Hmm? Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Hmm? Whereupon on the whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who shut up the sea with, the, with doors when it break forth as if it had issued out of the womb? When I made the cloud the garment thereof and thick darkness a swaddling band for it? And break up for it my decreed place and set bars and doors? And said, Hitherto shalt thou come, but no further, and here shall thy proud wave, thy proud waves be stayed. Uh, I forget, it's like what, over 150 questions the Lord asked Job. Job, whom the Lord said, He is a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and sheweth evil. That one of the greatest testimonies a man could ever have. From the Lord Himself, and this is how. <laughs> oh, 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 tough guy. Yeah, yeah. You, you good, good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Going to the Lord, asking Him all your questions. You can ask the Lord questions in prayer. Yes, you can. But these, these, these atheist people. Oh, I'm gonna get before God and blah blah. No, you. You're going to be pisseth down your trousers leg, little boy. That's what you're going to do. You're going to pisseth down your trouser leg in terror. See, we as the church of the living God, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. We're going to, you and me, brother and sister, who are saved, going to go to heaven because we're sealed. He asked these of Job. Over 150 questions or something like that. 
How's that walk of sanctification coming now, brother and sister? Oh, and more on this, more on this. Job 40. Job 40. Yeah. By his knowledge, the depths are broken up, and the clouds drop down the dew. By his knowledge. Oh, you, you, think, you think you know better than God, huh? Huh? Oh, well, and then this thing comes up, well, you're going to extremes. We can't be extreme enough in serving our Lord Jesus Christ. We can't. We can't. Why? Because we're hampered by the skin suit that our spirit and soul are within. Okay? But Job chapter 40, verses 1 on to verse 14. Tough guy. Yeah. Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? He that reproveth God, let him answer it. Job. Job. Perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and showeth evil. Can't stress that to you enough. That's the Lord said that of Job himself. And here's how the Lord is talking to him. He he needed he needed a whooping because of his three buddies who in his grief opened up their big mouths and blah 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 blah. Uh, because of that, that was the reason why Job decided to boast himself. He didn't do it at gunpoint. Okay, but that was the reason. And he being a fallible man after all. Okay. Verse 3. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay my hand upon my mouth. Once have I spoken, but I will not answer. Yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. You lost people? I'm going to ask the Lord so many questions. You're going to be pisseth down your leg, boy. So what's going to happen to you? Job's like, I'm vile. And you think you're so you're a good person, right? You're a good person. I'm a good person. I never did anything, Lord. You're right. You never did anything. Because going to him is the ultimate thing, if you will. Okay? Then answered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind and said, again, he says this, gird up thy loins now like a man. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. Notice how Job right there in verses 3 on to verse 5, he was like, Lord, I, I'm vile. I, I, I'm sorry. I repent. What does the Lord do? Come on, boy. Gird up your loins like a man. He wasn't done with him. Don't, don't pass that one over, okay? Verse 8. Wilt thou also disannul my judgment? Wilt thou condemn me that thou mayest be righteous? Oh, how many Christians do that today. Love is love. Right? Love is love. God made a mistake because he made you a woman in a man's body. <laughs> You decided to fornicate outside of the marriage bed and now the, the woman is with child but you don't want that responsibility so go kill it. Yeah. Yeah. Ver Christianity, these Christians, verse 8, that's what they do in their little church buildings. God, these people got to be church. And they base that off of Catholicism because Catholicism uh, teaches that you got to go to a church building in order to be saved. That's what they teach in the uh, catechism and that's what Christianity teaches itself, the Christians in the church buildings. And you stubbornly want to call yourself a Christian. Okay. Go ahead. And then go ahead and try to explain to a lost person what makes you a real Christian as opposed to all the other Christians. Let go, brother, sister. Okay, but let's continue. Verse 9. Hast thou an arm like God? Or canst thou thunder with a voice like Him? Yeah. Deck thyself now 
with majesty and excellency, and array thyself with glory and beauty. Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath, and behold everyone that is proud, and abase him. Look on everyone that is proud, and bring him low. And break down the wicked, and tread down, excuse me, the wicked in their place. Hide them in the dust together, and bind their faces in secret. Then will I also confess unto thee that thine own right hand can save thee. And, you know, look at the Christians today. Uh, like that satanic devil, Mark the Messenger. Got to keep the commandments in order to stay saved. Okay? So, th they can save themselves. This is you know, just what we read here. You know, these Christians can save them. They save themselves. I'm saved because I just believe. So your own right hand can save you. Yeah. Yeah. By his knowledge, the depths are broken up. And the clouds drop down the dew. Verses 21 to verse 24. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. For he giveth his beloved sleep. What is that in uh, Psalm 127? I believe that is. This is not part of the notes, but uh, Psalm 127? Not 137. Well, Psalm 127? Yes. Verses 1 and 2. Except the Lord built the house, they labor in vain that built it. Built it, excuse me. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. What is verses 21 on verse 24 talking about? Look at verse 21. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Them. What is the, the them? What is the them? Look at Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7. Verse seven. Okay, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Have understanding. Be not wise in your own eyes. You know, don't, don't pat yourself on the back thinking you're something when you're not. Thinking you know better than the Lord. Okay? And also, in uh, Proverbs 3, verses 13 on to verse 15. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, the fear of the Lord, and the man that getteth understanding, departing from evil. Okay? For the merchandise is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. Yes, because fine gold is something here for earthly things, but the treasure that the fear of the Lord produces is eternal. Okay? you got to be eternally minded. You see, Christianity is carnally minded. But we of the church of the living God, we are eternally minded. Aren't you? And verse 13 again, uh, and verse 15 again, okay? She is more precious than rubies. And all the things that thou, and all the things thou canest desire are not to be compared unto her. Again, you see this in Scripture quite a bit. The fear of the Lord is likened unto a beautiful woman. Okay, that is how we are. That is what. That's the way Scripture is, uh, talks of the fear of the Lord. That the beauty of the fear of the Lord is cannot be compared with anything on earth. It's so beautiful. It's so precious. Okay? The fear of the Lord is often compared to the beauty of a fine woman. The women that you see, sisters, you women out there, you see fine looking women. Oh! Beautiful looking women. That's flesh that you're looking at. A woman who feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give me a woman my wife who fears the Lord 
you're looking at you're you're looking at beauty right there. Beauty right there. Doesn't matter the the form of your visage, sister. You fear the Lord? A man of God, a brother, oh the most beautiful thing you'll ever see. But see, above all that, the fear of the Lord, liken unto a beautiful woman. Precious, beautiful. It's the beauty of the fear of the Lord. Can't even begin to comprehend it. Okay? But, the fear of the Lord. So what is the them in verse 21? Let not them depart from thine eyes. What is it? Wisdom and understanding. And, and continuing the thought uh, in verse 21, keep sound wisdom, sound wisdom, the fear of the Lord. Sound. Sound. Based off of truth. Not based off of shifting sand, flesh. Earthly, sensual, devilish. Okay? Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid, because God has not given us the spirit of fear. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. What, what, what is verses 21 under verse 24 talking about? The fear of the Lord which brings uh, uh, is the beginning of the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom produces knowledge. And having the fear of the Lord also produces, ought to produce in you understanding departing from evil. What is this talking about? It's talking about sanctification. Sanctification. Go to Exodus chapter... Exodus, I just left my, Exodus chapter 13. Exodus chapter 13. First reference. Exodus chapter 13. Verses 1 and 2. Exodus chapter 13. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is mine. One second, brethren. Yes, first mention of the word sanctify here. Exodus chapter 13, verse 2. Sanctify unto me all the firstborn. Sanctify. Set apart. Okay? Set apart. Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is mine. Set apart, made for the master's use, sanctify. Okay? And go to John chapter 17. Okay? John chapter 17. So if sanctify means setting apart, being separate, as it were, so sanctification would be what? The actual act of doing, of being, of sanctify. Right? John chapter 17, you know what verse, verse 17? Uh, uh, verse 16 and 18. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. And 99.9% .9 of Christians are of the world. Yeah. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Which one? Authorized version of the scriptures. The other ones, they're Bibles. Don't mess around with them. Okay? As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. So to be set apart, to, be, to sanctify, to get away, to, uh, what is this? Okay? By understanding, hath he established the heavens to be sent to sanctify, to be set apart? To be other, separate, that kind of stuff. And also Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, of course. Familiar verses. Verses 1 and 2. For us who are saved, obviously. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, 
that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The word sanctify appears 65 times in Scripture. It only appears, the word sanctify only appears six times in the New Testament. Six, the number of man. And the word sanctification appears five times, only in the New Testament. Five, the number of death. Check me out on that one. Go ahead, about sanctify. Now, yes, sanctify, holy, they are two different things. Yes, yes. But sanctification, the, verses 21 on verse 24 are talking about sanctification. And like I said, see, and under the law, you sanctified yourself, okay, by doing the works of the law. In this dispensation, after the death, burial, and resurrection, okay, what sets us apart? Our Lord Jesus Christ, because we came unto him his way. Okay, the way of the cross, which is death. And sanctification, which appears five times, all in the New Testament, five, the number of death. Oh, and my dear brother and best friend, yeah, we're going there. We're going there. Where are we going? You ought to know. Where are we going? Five, check me out. Sanctification appears five times. Only in the New Testament. Only in the New Testament. Sanctification. The act of being sanctified or sanctified or whatever. Okay? Five times the number of deaths. Don't jump over that. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. Okay? Colossians chapter 3. Verses 1 on verse 7. Sanctification. Five times. Five the number of death. If ye then be risen with Christ, if you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, not a mere Christian, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Be eternally minded. Christianity is carnally minded. Look here on YouTube. It's all carnally minded. Okay? Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. Because the wisdom of this world is earthly, sensual, devilish. Because Satan favors the things that be of man, not of God. Because he was cursed to, to go on his belly, eating dust. And we're dust. Okay? Whoa, oh, get, get, what are you doing? Get, what is that? What is that? Pick your pardon. Bug. Pick your pardon. Let's continue. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify. Therefore, your members which are upon the earth, mortify, morte. Now, we like to say that mortify merely means to put down. And it does. But morte, Morta. He is morte. Or morta. Dead. Dead. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. We are to kill this flesh. And see, people take that to, the, to uh, a measure that they shouldn't. Self-flagellation. No, it's not. You don't do that. No. We, you know, if your eye offend thee, pluck it out. If thy hand offend thee, cut it off. If thy foot offend thee, cut it off. That doesn't mean literally. What does that mean? Uh, have understanding. Depart from evil. Run from it. Put, set no wicked thing before thine eyes. Okay? We are to fear God. The fear of the Lord. That is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. And by wisdom he made the earth. The mountains and the hills and all that tremble and fear before him. And most of man, 99% of man, don't. It's talking about our sanctification. We're to kill this flesh. Mortify. Therefore, your members which are upon the earth, 
fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And every single one of them can be turned into a form of idolatry. But remember, idolatry and an idol is only always, in every, uh, 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 in every appearance, is a little marionette statue. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. This isn't talking about children of disobedience, those who are saved. Children of disobedience are lost people who have heard the true gospel and rejected even just one time. You're a child of wrath. You're a child of disobedience. Okay? In the, in the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. Lived in them. Lived in them. Ye were that. Ye were that. But now we are to what? We are to be, we are to sanctify. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 and verse 7. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification that ye should abstain from fornication physical fornication yes but also means spiritual fornication you're committing spiritual fornication when you watch a Hollywood movie you're committing spirit uh, speaking unto saved people you're lost <laughs> light it up there buddy okay but save people you're committing spiritual fornication when you watch a Hollywood movie, when you listen to sexual, secular uh, Christian contemporary music, okay? When you do things of the world and live in them, okay? You're, cre you're committing fornication. Maybe not actually physically with another woman or if you're a woman with a man, no, but spiritual, okay? It's not just relegated to the physical, okay? that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Holiness, not unto uncleanness. Okay? Sanctification. Not to be like the world. And the process of sanctification is a time consuming one. Some things happen just like that, yes. Other things of sanctification is a process. And oh, there's a lot of bumps and rocks and stones in that road. Oh yeah. You trip and fall. A just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. Okay? Oh, a lot of chastisement in the way of sanctification. Hi. But it's a process. It is. First Thessalonians chapter five. Uh, verses fifteen on to verse twenty three. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good. And what is good? Our Lord Jesus Christ and the Scriptures. That's the only thing that is good. Okay? Both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Hey brother, hey sister, in everything. Give thanks in everything. Lord, thank you for humbling me and giving me a heart problem because of my own the way I've treated this this body that you gave me. Thank you, Lord. Brother, sister. See, Christianity wants only what is good. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God and not evil also? Job said that. 
Okay? When his wife said, Dost thou still retain thy, integ thy integrity? Curse God and die. And Job's like, You speak like a foolish woman. What? Shall we take good only from the Lord and not uh, evil as well? Like we talked about in the previous video. You don't know how the Lord is going to use what you're going through to reach someone else in your life of sanctification. Okay? This video plays in part with the previous video too, by the way. Okay? It's easy to thank God for when things are going good. But you know what? It's like, what else can you do? God, God created you. He is the only way. What else are you going to go to? Man, good luck. Good luck standing at the great white throne. Well, I'm going to demand to God. You, you're going to be on your face. Okay? You're going to be on your face. You're going to piss it down your leg. And you're going to be covered in it. Out of terror. Out of terror. Give me this tough guy. No, no way. But see, it's easy to thank God when things are going good. What about when things are going bad? According to you. Chastening? Sanctification? Hmm. Yes. In everything give thanks. Why? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from all appearance from evil. Set no wicked thing before your eyes. Okay? Distinction. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth in Proverbs 3. Verse 19, by understanding he hath established the heavens. Separation, distinction. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, this is what a person is, okay? And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful, I know I said the 23. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Okay? 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verses 20 on to verse 22. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verses 20 on to verse 22. But in a great house... There are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. What's the contrast? Someone who, and this is what this is talking about, those who are actually truly saved, born again, converted, of the church of the living God, but they are not living a life of sanctification. They want nothing to do with the scriptures. They want their cake and eat it too. These people are a shame unto our Lord. They embarrass the name of our Lord. But yet when they die, they're going to go to heaven. But yet, in heaven, our Lord is going to be ashamed of them. Okay? Because our Lord's not alive. And imagine the life of someone who is actually saved and lives like a devil. Okay? Embarrassing our Lord. Bringing shame upon our Lord. His name means nothing, even though they have quenched the spirit within them. And they've probably been handed over to death. Because if you disobey, if you don't do as the Lord says, even if you're saved, okay, you won't lose your salvation. No. Once saved, always saved. But God will kill you. He will. Uh, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Okay? 
You mess around with God long enough as a church of the living God, you don't want a sanctified life, you don't want to live according to the scriptures, your life, the way you live, you embarrass the Lord and you bring shame upon his name and upon us. Lord, kill you. Get you out of there. So you don't do any more damage to his name. Because he has uh, magnified his word above his name. And then you got someone who is actually saved and lives like a devil. Your days are numbered, pal. Your days are numbered. Yeah, sanctification is not at gunpoint. God doesn't force anything on us. Well, he does not. You got to make the right choices, buddy. Okay? You got to make the right choices. And verse 22. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow after, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart, out with fellow brethren who live a life of sanctification. Because it's, and again, this came about because of a brother who recently the Lord has been showing him what Romans 8.28 means. Again, we, we quote this, don't we? But have you lived it? In everything give thanks for the good and for the evil. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. If you truly love God, you would seek to live your life according to the scriptures. To have a life of sanctification, a process of sanctification. Hating yourself, hating sin, especially in yourself. And you got to remember Romans 7. Oh, wretched man that I am. Okay? You got to remember that. But we as the church of the living God, we sin every day. We hate it. A just man falls seven times and rises up again. But see, that's where God's grace comes in. Okay? Now we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called, saved, according to his purpose. And you're called if you go to him his way, not your own. Have you lived this yet in your life? Whatever hell or nightmares things you're going through, if you're of the church of the living God, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Your chastisement you're going, for, uh, going through right now, brother, sister, is for your good. His good. That you may be a good example of Him. Okay? What you're going through right now, whatever it is, if you're of the church of the living God, whether it's chastisement, sanctification, it all works for good. Is good. Because He is the only one who is truly good. If anything good comes out of us, it's not of us. It's of the Lord who dwells within us. It's a sanctification, dear brethren. My son, let not them fear and uh, uh, fear the Lord, wisdom and understanding. Let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Verses 25 on to verse 26. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Be not afraid of sudden fear. And as uh, as uh, we, had, we had already mentioned, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. But also Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter 10. 
Proverbs chapter 10. We want verses 21 on to verse 24. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. Proverbs 10, verses 21 on to verse 24. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools who say in their heart there is no God die for want of wisdom, the fear of the Lord. Okay? The blessing of the Lord it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. Yes. Yes. It is as a, it is as sport to a fool to do mischief. But a man of understanding, departing from evil, hath wisdom, the fear of the Lord. The fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him. But the desire of the righteous shall be granted. All you wicked devils out there, all you coadjutors, all your fears will come to pass upon you. All of them. The fear of the wicked. When my mother, one of my mother's greatest fears was suffocation. She died suffocating because her heart quit. There are others out there, these uh, people who are dying. Their fears are coming upon them. The fear of the wicked will come upon them. The greatest fear that you have there, devil, you wicked, rancid scoundrel, your greatest fear is going to come upon you. What you fear the most. Whatever it is. Because your fear is the fear of man. Your fear is based off of what is first earthly, sensual, devilish. But see, we of the church of the living God. Deuteronomy chapter 32. One verse. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Just one verse. Verse 31. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 31. <laughs> uh, verse uh, 31 on to verse 33. Excuse me. For their rock is not as our rock. You lying devils. Say you're Christian. You're not. Oh, no, 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 excuse me. You are Christians. Like your brother Catholics are, you Jesuit coadjutors and you Jesuit wannabes. Yeah. May you reach your aspiration in life, you young little stupid punk. May you do so. Okay? For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. And their wine comes from them, comes to them from where? Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth and all her daughters. Okay? And of course, Isaiah chapter 8 Oh, this, this one is good. Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8. We want verses 11 on to verse 14. For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people. Say, say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy, neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. These, these people, especially on YouTube, who are basically whores, who will lie with anyone because it suits their own purpose. They'll be on such and so-and-so's person's side if it meets their own purpose. They're whores. They're prostitutes. Okay? Neither fear ye their fear. What these devils fear. Don't fear what they fear. 
Our fear is the Lord. Sanctify the Lord of hosts Himself and let Him be your fear and let Him be your dread. But Christians say, Oh, Jesus, we're not supposed to fear Jesus. Hey, you Christians, what do you do with the red words in Revelation? Huh? Oh, well, that, that must be another. That, we, 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 <laughs> what do you do with the red words in Revelation? Your sweet little Jesus talking about killing people and putting them and killing them with death and that he hates things. But no, you Christians, your Jesus loves everybody and everything. It's not the Jesus of the Scriptures. That's that man of sin, the son of perdition, which is anti-Christ. Replace and against. Okay? With these Christians, these, you know, about the red word Christians, throw that in their face about the word, red words in Revelation and see them squirm. I've heard, well, that, I, I don't know, that, 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 that must be someone else. Okay, yeah. Remember, the God of the Old Testament is also the God of the New Testament. One God. One God. Comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Which is a person. There are... It's, a, it's, a, it's devilish. It's evil. It's the Trinity? Trinity. Three people, three persons, make one God? <laughs> Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself and let him be your fear and let him be your dread. Okay? And he shall be for a sanctuary but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Don't fear their fear. Amen? Amen? And, you know, while we're in Proverbs chapter 3, okay? Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked, when it cometh. <coughs> For the Lord shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Verses 5 and 6 in Proverbs 3. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. And Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Verses 3 on to verse 9. Trust in the Lord, and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Now, we are not doing good today to be saved or stay saved like devils like Mark the Messenger teaches you. Okay? We do good by living our lives according to the Scriptures because we're called to be ambassadors for Christ. Okay? Having the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation. So to do good is what? To do what the Scriptures say. We talked about this already before. Okay? Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. See, if you delight yourself in the Lord through the scriptures, the desires of your heart are going to line up with scripture. But see, Christianity takes this and twists this. Love the Lord because, and he'll give you that new car. He'll give you that girlfriend, boyfriend. He'll give you, no, no. The Lord abhors the covetous. Okay? The Lord abhors the covetous. What is that? That's, uh, that's Psalm 10, right? That's Psalm 10. Uh, yeah, Psalm 10, verse 3. The wicked boasteth of his heart's desire, and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. Okay? If you delight yourself in the Lord, you, you, you delight in, you know, like we already saw. Okay? Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. Christianity comes and twists this. Yea, hath God said, Christianity is of Satan. 
Okay? Oh. Yeah, it is. Get over it. Deal with it. But Christianity comes to this and says, Love the Lord and He'll make you rich, wealthy, happy, and wise. And it, it, no. That's covetous. Christianity. Christianity equals covetousness. And you want to defend that and then fix yourself to that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Doing so is not going to send you to hell. God, man, what's wrong with you? I'm not a Christian. You're saved. Neither are you. Don't talk, try to talk like one of them. If you're saved, because you're not. Even if you want to be. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Right there, verse 6, dispensational difference, because this was written for under the law, okay? This is our instruction in righteousness. Our righteousness is what? The righteousness of Christ. Under the law, your righteousness was what? Keeping the law, okay? Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Look at all the Christians. I rest my case. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Amen. Don't be like them. Don't, don't essay to be as a Christian. Because if you're saved, born again, converted, you're not. Christian is satanic. And we as the church of God, saints, called to be saints, we live a life of sanctification. And sooner or later in this walk with our Lord, you're going to go through Romans 8.28. That's just the way it works. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you unto uh, our dear brother who had a part, you know who you are, who had a part in bringing this about. It was a wonderful study. It was a wonderful, beautiful thing to look into the scriptures to come to. Uh, and please, brethren, people, search the scriptures. Be a Berean for once in your life. Gonna get this video uploaded. Thank you so much for those of you who pray for us, who help us. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. Um, we need all the prayers we can get. Remember to keep our brother Alexander Hartley in your prayers. Uh, our brother from North Dakota. Apparently, uh, I haven't talked to him for a while. I'm, he's he's got a lot of stuff going on with the move. Um, hopefully, uh, I think he's moved in. But you know. I'm, giving him time so he can get situated. Pray for him. Our brother from New Jersey, keep him in your prayers as he's being a fatherly influence onto his grandson. Um, our brother from Norway, that he continues his walk of sanctification. Our brother from Croatia, same, that, he, uh, that the Lord continues to use him and his walk of sanctification. Our brother from Iowa, again, a walk of sanctification. Our brother from uh, Oregon, that he walks a, a walk of sanctification. Our sisters, our sister from England. The labor is not in vain, dear sister. And answering your question, Lord willing, will come Wednesday. Lord willing, should be. Got uh, got uh, got some good notes. Got some good notes. Problem that I'm having is when it comes to that, I got to be specific, narrow-minded on it. Because I want to brand, uh, it just naturally comes to branch out into so many other areas. Got to keep it simple. Okay, so. But anyway, that's enough. We love you. Thank you for your prayers. Hopefully this, uh, hopefully this will help some of you. Okay. Thank you so much for watching if you do. See you in the next video.
拜。